Hi guys, Virginia here and I'm back with another 12 by 12 process video for you today. Just showing you my photo, it's a photo of my daughter. Um, a couple of summers ago we had a really big heat wave so um, she was pretty much just running around in a nappy and that was it. It was hot, really hot. So anyway, I've got a cut file, it was a free cut file from the paper issues store and I've cut out some pretty little butterflies and some circles and I'm going to use some of the Pink Paisley Fancy Free collection today. So I'm just going to back the larger butterflies with some pattern paper and I think I'm going to go for um, the softer tones in this collection and I'm going to do some just some greens, pinks and yellows and kind of play on that tone on tone theme. So I'm just showing you there I'm backing one of the butterflies with the green and um, I don't make you watch all of it. It's a bit of a tedious task but I just show you um, kind of how I do it. I trace an outline and then cut just inside the line and then um, glue it to the back of the cut file. So I do a different pattern um, but in the same colour tones on each of the three larger butterflies. Um, and then that's done. So that's the green. So I'm going to do a green on the top left, um, the pinky tones on the top right and down the bottom right will be yellow tones. I'm also going to do a bit of mixed media on this layout as well. Um, that's why I've got the little butterfly stencil down the bottom there um, and that'll be coming up shortly. Okay and I'm not um, I'm just using um, scrap bits I don't want to cut up whole bits of paper for this um, backing of a cut file um, and I don't think I'm likely to use the circles in this paper. Okay so I'm going to use some gelatos today and I'm just going through and um, choosing what colours I think will match and I end up with this corally colour and I do blend a bit of hot pink in it just to make it a slightly more pinky colour and um, I also just pull out a yellow and a what's that colour like a tearly colour as well and I'm just going to do the packaging technique and just mix a bit of water with them rub them on the plastic mix a bit of water and then just smush it on the paper which is always fun to do. And I did just put my cut file in place just so that I kind of had an idea of um, where to put the gelatos. Um, I just did a light pencil line and then erased the darkest bits out just so I could work out where to put it and um, keep the colour um, directly behind the coloured butterflies. If that makes sense, you'll see in a minute anyway. Okay, so just rubbing it on and adding a bit of water, mixing it up. Um, sometimes I find the gelatos, if you push a bit too hard, they um, flake off into big chunks. So I just um, kind of pull off the larger bits and then just add a bit of water to the other ones and just work at them and they break down so you don't get large chunks of um, gelato in your work. Okay, so just mixing that up and then I'll apply it to the paper. I don't make you watch all of it because I mean you've seen a packaging technique a thousand times I'm sure. So I've done the pink and I just show you the end um, where I finish off the green as well. Okay, so I just take a bit of tissue paper and I just dab up the stuff that's wet. I didn't gesso the paper because I wasn't adding a lot of water um, or liquid to it so I wasn't too too worried about it buckling although it does in the end buckle a bit but that's okay. And then I've just pulled out my, uh, my impasto medium and I'm going to use that through the stencil. Um, I like to use this um, when applying it over colour because it doesn't dry and opaque white, it dries somewhat clear, it's still a bit cloudy but um, for the most part it's somewhat clear and it picks up the colour that you lay it on top of so it's, it generally makes a softer tone of whatever colour is behind it so um, it just adds more texture and dimension and 
allows you to make patterns and stuff through the stencils and my OCD nature <laughs> was showing through there um, it, I marks, masked off the um, half butterflies on that stencil because I didn't want half butterflies <laughs> yeah I'm a bit funny like that so I showed you before um, what it looked like when it was dry and you can see the butterflies are kind of cloudy white colour but it, they show through the colour of the gelatos in the background and what I did before was just pull out my um, two of my butterfly punches and I punched a few um, butterflies um, from yellow and pink and green scraps from that collection just so I could um, scatter them around the page as embellishments as well um, now it was looking kind of too white to me I wanted to add some more colour so I went through the 12 by 12 paper pad and pulled out this one that looks kind of like um, kind of like washi strips or whatever just strips of colour and they were the soft tones keeping in with what was on the layout so I've chosen that and I'm just going to cut off um, just under a quarter of an inch of each side of that white cardstock and I'm going to mount it to that pattern paper um, with a bunch of um, double sided tape that also helps with the warping the slight warping that I had in the paper it just helps keep it flat and um, nice on the page <coughs> sorry guys I'm a bit croaky today okay so I'm just sticking that down flattening it out so it's nice and straight and then I decided I wanted to pull a bit of um, a bit more texture around the edges so I end up bringing out my sewing machine and just doing a white simple straight stitch just a little bit in from the um, white cardstock and then I'm going to just put a little bit of washi tape at the corners I don't do the whole lot it's just the corners that are really troublesome um, when you do a large stitch like this and then I'm just going to go along the edges and ruffle them up and mess them up just add a bit of texture Okay, so I'm happy with that and um, so I'm going to mount my cut file with um, a whole lot of foam behind the larger butterflies and I just cut up some um, small foam adhesive pieces and stick them around the circle pieces as well just to make sure that that stays off the page as well and I really like how some of the butterflies on the cut file, the white bits, stick out over on the pattern paper at the edges I really like that, that gives a bit more dimension to the page See, it feels a lot more colourful now, now that I backed it, I'm happy I did that. I'm going to trim down my photo, just cut off the unnecessary bits. I mean, there's not a lot of space for a huge photo, and I still need to work in a title and some journaling as well. So I just cut that down and um, trim it to the main focal point, which is my daughter, and the funny look on her face. And I end up backing it on some white cardstock, just um, to get a nice white crisp edge around the photo. Um, I tend to do that with pretty much all of my photos unless I've printed it with a white border and I don't trim it down and then I'm just going to go through my um, 6x6 paper pad and 12x12 pad and just back the photo with some of those same colours the pinks and the greens and the yellows um, now if you've watched previous videos you know that this is something that I tend to do I just pretty much try to use scraps when I am back in my photo um, I'm, I never check out my pattern paper it can always be used and so that's what I've done here I've just used a bit of uh, scrap from the 6x6 paper pad and the pink and the blue and I couldn't find any yellow in that one so I end up cutting a piece from the 12x12 paper pad in yellow um, I don't think I'm going to use too much of that paper so I wasn't worried about cutting into it for that and then I end up backing the entire thing on some vellum just to continue with that softness on the layout and I tear the edges on that ok so just adhering those pieces down <laughs> now you'll probably see throughout this video um, either a little hand or little <laughs> bits of paper me putting glue on little bits of paper that's my daughter she is scrapbooking beside me and um, while I let her use the scissors, they are safety scissors uh, for little kids, um, I don't quite let her have free reign with the glue so she's cutting up bits of paper for me to put glue on <laughs> so she can stick them down on her page so you'll probably <laughs> see me doing that and wondering what on earth I'm doing that's what I'm doing 
Okay. So these are just the blue piece of scrap I've cut down and I'm just going to tuck that in the left hand side. If you can tell I've kind of tried to keep the colours um, that I've mounted the photo on kind of towards the colours that I've created like the pinks and the um, greens and yellows. I've tried to keep them on the same sides of the photo just to, I, I really love the tone on tone effect and um, that's just a nice way to do it as well. I mean they're not specifically in those places but um, near enough. Okay so just mounting it on some vellum as well. Just a light um, edge of it ends up showing but it just adds a bit of softness and texture and more interest to the page. Okay, and I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to back um, about half the photo with some um, foam just to keep it bumped up off the page um, so that it matches where the cut file is. The cut file is raised off the page as well so I'm just going to some tape and glue and glue that down to the back and then I think I start going through the um, ephemera pack for the fancy free collection. Um, as I've said before in a previous video I don't have a lot of stuff for this collection so I just kind of make do and um, there wasn't a lot of um, tone on tone stuff like just plain coloured stuff so um, I ended up having to delve into my stash for this which was quite cool. I don't normally do that and I should do more of it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay, so just placing my photo where I want it, tucking it in behind that yellow butterfly. I did contemplate tucking that butterfly wing in between the layers of the photo but I decided I wanted the wing to show and it makes the photo feel more um, nestled in place. I do have to end up trimming off a slight little bit of foam behind that butterfly ring just to make the photo fit a bit better. Okay, so now I'm going to start going through the ephemera pieces and I really don't find much. I only find it one um, greeny bluey tag that says love this. It's a journaling tag um, and I end up sticking that and just tuck it under the photo the top left and that stays here I like that. That's about the only other thing that I put behind that photo. It is the only thing. Um, I do kind of audition that circular tag um, but that doesn't make it. Um, I felt adding too much would just yeah, make it a bit too heavy on that side because I didn't have anything else in the other colour ranges to really match. So yeah, I'm just going to go through the 12 by 12 chipboard sheet and as you can see there is not a lot that is really appropriate I guess. Um, I couldn't find anything yellow. Um, the only thing pink were like an ampersand and some words and there wasn't anything green except for some buttons but um, I didn't like them for the layout. But I do end up choosing off that chipboard sheet um, a little um, phrase that just says just be you and that's in the pink and I end up sticking that on top of the pink butterfly. And that's all I chose from that chipboard sheet. Okay, back to the chipboard sheet. Thinking, thinking. There really wasn't a lot that kind of went with it. I probably should have cut this out, but never mind. It's, um, it's all part of the process, isn't it? <laughs> And there's the pink tag that I used. Um, when I pulled it off the chipboard sheet, half of the adhesive backing came off, so I ended up just pulling it off, um, pulling off the adhesive bit, and I just um, glue it into place. Because uh, eventually it's just going to come off anyway, isn't it? So, yeah, I'm still really determined to try and find something on that chipboard sheet, but I don't. I did contemplate using um, some of the word phrases of that sheet as the title, but no. I didn't really go with what I wanted and um, I wanted the title to say Summer Heat Wave but it doesn't end up being that um, as you'll see coming up. The 
this is where I get creative and start delving into my stash and I think flowers I haven't used flowers on a layer in a long time and I've got a quite a sizable stash so I go to my yellow section and just pull out a couple of um, yellow flowers and they end up down with the yellow butterfly and I like that um, please don't manage to use a couple <laughs> And I just glue them into place so I don't have any adhesive or anything on the back, so glue works well. I did contemplate using a green flower in the um, green section, but I decided no, because then this I'd have to do pink at the top and it would be kind of off. So I went through my stash of little butterfly things and I found this um, folded butterfly and put that on so that's that's cool it's kind of um we've got your visual triangle going but it, every um extra embellishment in it is different and i like that difference um it's really cool but what you see as i go a bit further um everything else is the same so there's only one small point of difference and that's the embellishments that i've stuck on top of the large butterflies if that makes sense you'll see <laughs> i know what i'm talking about And now I'm just going to go through and start um, adhering down this little hand. <laughs> start um, adhering down the smaller butterflies that I punched out earlier on. And I don't use all of those butterflies. Um, I just use some, just a mixture of the sizes and just kind of dot them around. Um, again, the green and the green, the pink and the pink, and the yellow in the yellow section. Just adds um, more colour, um, but really in a really subtle way. And as you know, I love my little embellishments and making clusters of those smaller pieces. So um, this is right up my alley. So I don't make you watch all of it. Um, me mucking around with the tweezers and glue is a bit painful to watch. Okay, so that's all the butterflies done. And then I decided to pull out my Amy Tan stamp that's got a whole lot of different phrases. And I thought, well, my distress inks were on my desk beside me and I thought well I could pull in some of that as well so I just choose a different phrase for each, each section and just use a coloured ink um, matching each colour again and just down the yellow I just stamped my favourite and I just stamped it once and then trailed off um, to get the faded look and at the top I in the pink I did love this and remember this in the green um, just choosing inks that matched I really like how it turned out, it's um, kind of a sketchy effect and the colour is slightly darker than the gelatos on the background so it um, just adds to it, I really like how that came out. And again I didn't make you watch um, me do all of it but you get the gist, um, I'm just finishing up the green there and just stamping it in three places just kind of making a um, triangle around each cluster and so now I decided I needed some more little embellishments so I pulled out my sequins and just found some sequins that match them and I just did um, three of each colour three yellow three pink three green and just dotted them around the place with a little bit of glue behind them and I do also end up pulling out um, some white ones and just placing two in each cluster, two white ones in each cluster and I like that, it just adds a little bit of sparkle, not too much um, I was really surprised when I actually finished the layout and realised I hadn't put any great um, gold <laughs> on the layout that I seem to gravitate towards my gold embellishments and um, I didn't do it on this layout so I was quite proud of myself and I really love how the layout turned out without it so um, I should have to do more of that I think. It's good to break out of our um, habits once in a while and do something different. So what I'm doing now is I've just pulled out some Amy Tan stickers I found at Spotlight they were on sale so they're just random pieces of my embellishments and they're just tiny word stickers and I just again pull out three of each colour sheet and um, dot them around my clusters as well. I think I use always best oh yes in the pink and 
oh yes this happened and meet cute in the yellow and best hey and fun 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 in the green and I've just kind of dotted them around in three separate places as well I mean the colors don't match perfectly within the tones um, the yellow ones are kind of almost like a peachy color and the other ones in the green section are almost a blue but that doesn't worry me it's kind of still within the color range so um, that's fine with me um, I felt like um, I did contemplate using the Tim Holtz tiny word stickers but if I didn't want to put black on the layer um, I felt like it would be too harsh because the whole thing was really soft so yeah so I'm gonna work on my title now and I pulled out the thickest for the fancy free collection and tried as I might and they were way too big for my title um, I wanted to have summer heat wave and it was just not going to fit so they get moved around a bit but then they get taken off and I end up pulling out um, I think they were thickest I think they came from the Maggie Holmes Bloom collection they're really old but they have a lot of bright colors and some that are quite simple um, not with a lot of flor florals and stuff and I found some in the tones that kind of matched them with the layer so I end up using those ones okay so I'm just finding some colors in those thickers that match um, I'm not being too pedantic, I was just trying to find colours in those three um, tones. I would have liked another yellow one, um, but there wasn't many in there, in that pack actually. Um, and I didn't want to use the leafy ones and floral patterns, I wanted it to be um, really simple like the rest of the layout. Um, so I just spell out the word summer. And you can't see, but off to the left there is um, some smaller uh, white foam thickers that I wanted to spell out heat wave, but um, I wasn't going to get it in, so um, that idea went out the window as well. So I'm just placing them where I want, and I'm just going to glue them down, because um, thickers are notorious for not staying on the page. So I glue them down, so they're in place. And I do end up toying with the idea, I really wanted to have heat wave in the title, and I thought well maybe I could um, pencil it in, just draw it out in a nice scripty font, and then write over it. And you'll see that I do that, I pencil it on and then I was going to colour over it, but then again, um, the only real pens I had are black. Um, I probably could have used a grey. But I didn't have a grey and I did and then I thought well what about colour but I didn't really have any colour pens that matched so um, it gets penciled on and then it gets erased off pretty quickly so my title just ends up staying the summer I'm just gonna do the date as well and I'm just um, I'm gonna stick it underneath um, the word summer and I'm just gonna stamp it in that yellow ink um, the distress ink and just stamp it underneath so it kind of blends in but it's still the dates there on the page and I like that that turned out cool and I struggled over where to put my journaling but I ended up just um, writing it down the bottom in a very fine tip pen uh, just so it didn't detract too much from the page so that's pretty much it for my layout there will be um, some close-ups and some still shots at the ends end and um, yeah thanks so much for watching um, and subscribing to my channel and liking my videos it's so appreciated um, if you've got any questions please feel free to leave me a comment um, if there's anything you'd like to see me do or any products you'd like to see me use please let me know um, it'd be fun to do something different out of the box and yeah so that's it uh, thanks so much for watching again and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.